This video is a review of the hydrogen atom in quantum mechanics. So we start off with the hydrogen atom model. We've got a proton, which is fixed at the origin here, and we've got an electron, which is free to go around it any way it likes in all of three-dimensional space. The distance between the proton and the electron is called r here. So defining our Hamiltonian, we have that our Hamiltonian is the kinetic energy of the electron. The proton has no kinetic energy because it is fixed. So that's minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron. You could also use reduced mass of the electron proton system if you wished. Times the Laplacian operator, second derivative with respect to all spatial coordinates, minus Coulomb's law acting between them, uh, e squared charge of the electron squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times r, just Coulomb's law. And we're trying to solve h psi equals e psi for this system and the natural coordinate system to use again is going to be spherical polar coordinates are variables in terms of r theta and phi in spherical polar when we do this the energy levels we get are exactly the same energy levels we got from the Bohr uh, model system for the hydrogen atom we get that the energy depends on this negative constant times one over n squared where n is some energy level so n is a is a an integer which starts at one and goes up from there the degeneracy of each level goes up as n squared so at n equals one we have one state at n equals two we have four states n equals three we have nine etc and then these states very quickly become on top of each other and become a functional continuum as you approach zero so the wave functions of the hydrogen atom uh, can be broken down by separation of variables into a radial part which depends on the quantum numbers n and l and a an angular part which depends on the quantum numbers L and N. The angular part is the spherical harmonics, so we've already discussed that in the uh, rigid rotor. Those are the same spherical harmonics from there. This L and, J and the rigid rotor J are the same number. And the new part is this radial function depending on these quantum numbers N and L. And that's some normalization constant times R to the L times a decaying exponential e to the minus r over n a naught where a naught is the Bohr radius uh, which is 0 0.529 angstroms and then there's a polynomial which is called the associated Legare polynomial which you can look up in tables based off of these quantities that are, that are inserted here so and then our eigenvalues that we get for various operators which these are eigenfunctions of we have the Hamiltonian, of course, which gives uh, the energies as its eigenvalue, so we can distinguish between values of n that way. Then because of the spherical harmonics for the angular part, we have the same angular momentum operators from the rigid rotor. We have L squared acting on our wave function. The total angular momentum squared gives you h bar squared L times L plus 1 for its eigenvalue, L going from 0 to n minus 1. And you have, for m, you have the angular momentum around the z-axis, lz, gives the eigenvalue h bar m, and m can go from minus l up to l, again, m, l, and n all being integers. So defining the radius of the hydrogen atom, this can be defined in uh, several different ways. You could calculate the expectation value, which is uh, calculating the expectation value now in spherical polar, being, insure, being sure to uh, integrate with the proper limits of integration and with the proper volume element, which is d phi sine theta d theta r squared dr, and then our standard uh, psi star times psi. And then, oops, should be a little r in the middle there. So let me just go ahead and stick in that extra r there. And then uh, if we calculate that expectation value for the 1s orbital, we have 3 halves a naught, 3 halves the Bohr radius for the expectation value. And if you calculate the value where the first derivative equals to 0, where we have a maximum in the function, that is at the Bohr radius. So the, the location where we have the maximum density and the, and the expectation value are not the same uh, value as you'll see from the radial distribution function, which is r squared times the radial part of the wave function squared. Um, if you have the uh, hydro hydrogen atom in a magnetic field, then uh, levels with different values of the quantum number n, the m, the magnetic quantum number, they will split their energy levels within a certain uh, energy level here. So the energies now become the energy levels of the hydrogen atom outside of a magnetic field, 
plus the Bohr magneton times the quantum number m times the strength of a, of a magnetic field in the z direction, the Bohr magneton being a physical constant, m being an integer. So in the presence or absence of a magnetic field, s orbitals stay at the same energy level, and in the presence of a magnetic field, you have the three p orbitals inside some energy level split into three different energies based off of their different values of m for p0, p-1, and p-1. We need to add in spin for individual electrons because electrons interact with magnetic fields as well. And we have this uh, quantum number for spin for an electron, a single electron, that uh, eigenvalue is one half for an electron. And we ha have, it can have components on, along the z-axis of either plus or minus one half. And thus we refer to these states as either spin up, plus one half as being spin up or alpha, and minus one half for m sub s being spin down or beta. So in order to fully refer to a single electron, we need four quantum numbers, as we are familiar with from general chemistry. We need n, l, m sub l, and m sub s. So our state is fully specified by these quantum numbers here from these three operators and also an operator for spin. We can then have coupling between the orbital angular momentum L and the spin angular momentum S uh, in this total angular momentum J through a uh, spin orbit coupling operator. And the values of J can go from L plus S all the way down to the absolute value of L minus S. J is either going to be an integer or half integer. And then m sub j, similarly, the component of j along the z-axis varies all the way from plus j to minus j uh, by integer values in between. We go, then go on to t discuss term symbols, which are representations of different electronic states within uh, a hydrogen atom once you account for spin orbit coupling. And these term symbols are represented in shorthand for these values of s, l, and j. And uh, for a single hydrogen atom, we have just one electron. So 2s plus 1 up here in the left-hand corner is always going to be 2, or a doublet. For L, it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. But that'll be referred to as a capital S, capital P, capital D, etc. And then J will take on the values which are restrained by the values of L and S. And uh, we go through examples for how to determine that there. Then for a spectrum of a hydrogen atom, the spectrum is actually defined by the Rydberg formula and the Rydberg constant, which we discussed all the way back in early quantum theory. They were getting it back, they were getting it right there, but for the wrong reason. They just developed this relationship empirically, whereas here we've shown actually where it comes from the energy levels and the wave functions and arises very naturally from the structure of quantum mechanics rather than just uh, empirical fitting. And the selection rules we have for a hydrogen atom spectrum are that the change in the orbital angular momentum is going to be plus or minus one, the change in spin is going to be zero, and then the change in total angular momentum is going to be zero or plus or minus one. And n can change by any value you like, but typically we see the types of transitions we discussed in the Rydberg formula video in terms of uh, the series like uh, Balmer and Lyman, Passion, etc.